Welcome, friends, to another episode of We Are the Church, a daily ministry of encouragement from First United Methodist Church of Orange in Orange, California. I'm Pastor Bill Johnson. It's good to be with you today, and I will see you right on the other side of our opening music. Friends, today I have on my mind a couple of verses that are familiar to many from uh, Paul's letter to the Galatian church. This is uh, chapter 3, verses 27 through 29. And the author says, As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. And there is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring and heirs according to the promise. Now, these are words that are familiar to us, and we, we come to see them as words that mean that we shouldn't make all these distinctions between people. And can't we, you know, we kind of end up in a place where we say, can't we all get along? I don't want to undersell, undersell how incredibly difficult the change that was taking place uh, in the church was for many of the people. A lot of the people who came to know Christ in the early days were people who had been Jewish by birth and Jewish by tradition and Jewish by practice. And they came to see Jesus and believe that he was the fulfillment of God's promises to the Jews. And so they took their Jewish faith and they poured it out in love toward Christ. When Paul began his ministry to the Gentile world, he brought about a significant change in that he began to tell the Gentile converts who were coming to Christ that Christ was everything, and they just needed to be in love with Christ, and therefore they didn't need to keep kosher, and they didn't need to observe all the Jewish laws, and they didn't need to be circumcised and become part of the Jewish faith, faith first. This was very, very hard for some of the early Jewish Christians to accept. The law had been their self-identity. The law had been uh, how they came to know God, and, uh, and they only saw Jesus through the lens of the perfection of the law. I mean, the point is that it was a very difficult and hard-fought change, and Paul is making the case here that if you believe in Christ, then you are heirs to the promises of Abraham, that all of the richness of the Jewish faith is brought to its fulfillment in Jesus. It was a hard sell for him, and part of the reason is uh, that as human beings, when we live in relationship with each other, the relationship itself, the connection between you and me, can take on various forms of maturity. Uh, I'm going to call upon Rabbi Edwin Friedman, one of my favorite authors, to give you an illustration here. If the world in which we're living is rigid and fixed and hard and we don't want anything to change, then our relationship can take on those same characteristics. Rigid, difficult, hard to change. It would be like if you and I were welded to a stick like this pen here. You're here, I'm here, and anytime you wanted to grow or change in your relationship or in your uh, life, if you began to improve yourself, notice what happens to the other end of the stick. Um, here's normal. You start to change. I start to sink down. And you may have experienced in your life that in your family or in a set of relationships or even in the church, as you have begun to change and grow and do things different, there will be people around you who will kind of send torpedoes into your ship and <clears throat> sort of sabotage your work a little bit in order to get you to put things back just the way they were. Now, this is not a very mature relationship. This is my way or the highway. This is that, that kind of thinking. And Friedman says that the goal of people as they are relating to other people is to live in a world that's a lot more like a rubber band. So we're connected to each other and we will be connected to each other. And we, we make the commitment to stay connected to each other. But if I change or grow in this way, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're being uh, 
forced to do something different. The shape of our community can change because we are connected in such a way that I can allow you to grow and become different and you can allow me to grow and become different. And more importantly, we can allow the shape of our community to grow and become different. Now, there are always those people who, uh, when they see a rubber band, want to stretch it to the point where they can see if it can break. But um, it's very, very difficult to break that kind of relationship. It'll stretch, and when it stretches, it, it just fills itself with stored energy. Um, but that energy can be released in powerful and meaningful ways so that we can move forward um, and find new discoveries together. It was a radical thing for Paul to have said, in Christ there is neither slave nor free, uh, Jew nor Greek, uh, male nor female. And he wasn't saying that it doesn't matter who you are. He's saying quite the opposite. It matters very much who you are. But in Christ, we are connected by an inseparable bond. and We don't need to be sabotaging each other. Instead, we sit back in, in wonder and awe as we watch each other grow and come deeper in Christ. These are words that have been on my mind a lot lately because I think our culture is stuck in a kind of rigidity where if anyone is trying to make a change, someone else is trying to make a sabotaging event. And we need, as Christians and as Americans, to learn how to be way more flexible and to honor the work uh, that others are doing while at the same time committing to staying connected together. Just some thoughts for this Tuesday in the middle of September. Why don't we pray? Lord, we read in your word that in Christ Jesus, you are reconciling the whole world to yourself. Far be it from us to refuse to be reconciled to one another because we are offended or because we are rigidly holding on to the things that we have always believed. God, deliver us this day from thinking that it's my way or the highway and help us to follow the way of Christ which shows to the world an inexhaustible love for all people and all creation. And we pray this now in his name. Amen. Well, friends, go out and be flexible today. Don't give up your core self. You can stay where you are, but allow the people around you who are growing and changing to become their best selves too. And while you're at it, remember our three uh, words of, of uh, encouragement. Wash your hands, read a psalm, Tell someone today that you love them, especially if they're changing. God bless. See you soon.